of the most important tools humanity developed was the control of fire. It allowed us to warm ourselves, cook our food, and most importantly, use it to produce and extract crucial materials, ceramics, metals, and countless other compounds. The exact date humanity learned how to control and start their own fires is not well known, as most evidence has decayed away. But clues suggest it dates back, likely even before modern humans. So far, I've utilized fire several times for firing ceramics, hardening wood, shaping wood, and even smelting some metals. But I haven't yet created fire myself. Originally, we were planning on making this a bridging episode between the old format and this new format where I make all the tools myself. And in it, Guillaume and David were going to help me again and attempt to make some modern phosphorus matches using cow bones while I explored more primitive matches and fire starting methods. Unfortunately, we ran into countless roadblocks and eventually had to table the entire project and move on to the relaunch. It's going to be disgusting. Most readily available source of phosphorus. I can smell it. Don't move the bag because it whiffs. <laughs> a really convenient source of phosphorus, which used to be the source for many years before modern chemical processing techniques, was to get phosphorus from animal bones. Obviously, animal bones consist of a lot of calcium, but a lot of the remainder of the inorganic part of the bones is phosphorus. And all of the organic stuff has turned into a moldy, really disgusting mess. So we're going to open these up throw these into the kiln, see if we can get rid of all of the disgusting stuff. Guillaume, would you like Here to do go. the honors? Ooh. Oh, it Ooh. smells so bad. We'll throw this one on. It's like zombie flesh. I don't want to touch this. Oh, you volunteered. It looks almost as gross as it smells. Oh. We've set this kiln about 1100 degrees Celsius, which should get rid of everything that's not calcium and phosphorus. Have you ever gotten the fire department call? No, not yet. That handle is gonna catch fire. We need to get the other thing out of there. It's a little black inside. Last night we tried to ruin this kiln. Andy said that was a rite of passage to ruin a kiln and uh, we didn't succeed. So we're here giving it another shot. We're back, take three. Uh, apparently we did ruin the kiln, which puts us at one kiln ruined. And now we have one kiln fixed. So hopefully this works. Oh, it's going. Some part of me thought that might not work. We put the bones in for another hour at a little over 900 degrees Celsius. So the goal is that we'll get rid of all this black carbon on the bones and we should be left with just the white calcium phosphate that we want to extract out of the bones. And now they're completely dry and we're going to grind them up and then put them in sulfuric acid to extract out the phosphorus. Don't breathe that in, David. Real bony. Unfortunately, after multiple attempts with various different methods and approaches, they were unable to get the phosphorus to ever distill out. My more primitive matches were, however, a little bit more effective. Hello, fellow kids. This is lit. One of the first matches we ever used are actually sulfur matches. They work by soaking sticks in sulfur. So this is some of the sulfur ore that I collected near Death Valley. It has a much lower ignition point than just wood by itself. So it will light a lot easier than just a stick. Put it in an oven around 250 degrees Fahrenheit to melt out the sulfur in it and then run it through a coffee filter so we get just liquid sulfur at the bottom. These matches aren't like your modern matches in that you have to have an external source of heat still. But that was all from our scrap project and now we are operating under a whole new set of rules, namely being limited to only the tools we make ourselves. Coming up soon, we will be entering into the next stage of fire technology, when humanity learned how to increase its temperature enough to start melting more useful metals like copper. But first, we wanted to achieve this first milestone of humanity using two different methods, hitting two rocks together and rubbing two sticks together. But before I start my fire, I'm gonna need some good candidates for some tinder. We collected some cattails, whose fluffy heads make a great fire starter, and to use for some upcoming basket weaving. So an early tool we haven't really covered yet, but used is fire making, fire starting. It's commonly believed it was first utilized by just kind of finding an existing fire, either from like a forest fire or a lightning strike, and using that to start all your future fires. But eventually humanity figured out how to start actual fires and it's not certain which methods were first used, but a commonly believed one is flint and iron pyrite. 
So striking the iron pyrite will decompose the chemical bond, releasing sulfur and iron. The iron will react with the air and start on fire, basically oxidize, release a fair amount of heat. This is tinder fungus or hoof fungus, and this will light very easily, make a nice starting ground. You can then add other tinder. I'm not catching anything though. After some initial struggle, I handed this challenge off to Annalise to master so I could keep working on other upcoming projects. Probably all will do. Finally having success with a pyrite and flint, next I had Annalise try to make a tool that was potentially inspired from another invention we just covered, the bow and arrow, and make a bow drill. So the flint and pyrite fire took all together about five hours to start, which is not ideal, it's not very efficient, but that was also probably just I wasn't practiced at it. But we're gonna try a little more foolproof of a method uh, by making a bow drill. This will be the friction plate, this will become the spindle, and the twine in this stick will be the bow. This little bowl I made, I'm gonna use as my capstone, which will help me press the spindle into the friction board for enough friction to actually start a fire. I'm trying to cut it as much as possible instead of cracking it, because then this side will already be sharp for my spindle. God, this like whole piece of flint is sharp. So my spindle's pretty much made, so now I need to make a divot in this piece of wood that it'll fit into. So I'm just gonna take this little piece of flint and start drilling a hole. So to make the actual bow portion of the bow drill, I have to tie this string to either side of this stick. But I'm thinking I'm gonna have a similar problem I had with the bundle bow where the string wants to slide down the stick. To prevent this, I'm gonna just cut a little notch on either side, which the string will slot into and it'll hold it at tension. All right, so that should hold the string in place pretty well. So now I just have to cut notches into the other side. Oh, I broke. That's what we want. This should be under my foot, and that would help hold it in place. The problem I'm running into is when I apply pressure on the spindle, uh, it stops spinning in the rope. It just stays still, and the rope spins around it. It doesn't take it with it. And what I think to solve that is just a bit more tension, so I'm just gonna tighten this up a tiny smidge. Ting, ting, Now the rope broke. Too much tension? God damn. So now I'm working the spindle into the friction board a little bit, just so I can like really get a good start into it. All right, so I'm running into a problem where the friction of turning is oh. breaking my string. So I'm gonna see if coating it in beeswax helps at all with the longevity. Yeah, you're supposed to keep these strings separated and I don't know how that's supposed to work. So now that I've got the process started, 
I don't want to make an ember quite yet because I need it to be able to fall out of this really easily onto the tinder. So I'm going to cut a V-shaped notch into this. I think the purpose of this is also so oxygen can get to the ember and keep it alive. Smoking when I pull over. So we burnt through that side. This is that one. We burnt through that one way hotter. So if I make a new hole, we should be able to get it. This is gonna blow the draw away. Oh, we're close though. At least managed to have success with these, I also want to make sure I could get a fire started too. But first, to make the fire more portable, once I have it lit, I'm going to make a simple torch just using the same pine resin I've previously been using as glue. Like, this 
stuff on top and then really cup the birch bark into like a, a little bit and then yeah you, hopefully it'll help it stop it from working away. Okay. Now to get a fire lit so I can cook my catch. Stuff. In the end, it took both of us a combined 12 and a half hours to finally master this fire starting skill. Next, we'll be using this skill set to reach even higher temperatures with the additional use of charcoal and blowpipes to try and smelt some copper and tin so we can finally unlock the Bronze Age. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.